Hi guys and welcome back to another video of Gaming with the Powers. I'm Jay. I'm Sierra. And today we're continuing our Marvel United uh, Multiverse Kickstarter campaign series looking at more updates. Uh, so today we're taking a look at update 51 through 55. And so let's go ahead and just jump right in. So looking at update 51 called Problem Child. So the community has been successful in hitting the 1,620k mark unlocking Elsa Bloodstone. Um, which I think that's awesome. I think I'm, I'm actually kind of excited to play her. Yeah, I'm gonna try her. I think she'd be pretty cool. Um, so up next at 1,700k, <laughs> we have Kid Loki. Um, oh, interesting. That makes sense why he's the problem child. Yes, uh, the god of mischief. That's pretty cool. Like I think like what did I say? I think I said when I first saw this campaign. Like, I wish they did girl Loki instead of the thing Loki. And then I'll be like, man, but I wonder if they put, like, a different version of, uh, a different version of Loki. Like, what I want it, like, the alligator Loki. Nah, <laughs> the, they might. They yeah. Have somebody directions. said, somebody said they should put the, uh, the frog. And then they'll have a team the, Loki. Uh, the frog Thor. Remember the frog Thor? Yeah. With the, the, yeah. Uh, somebody said they should put him in there. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at Kid Loki here. If grown-up Loki is already trouble, Kid Loki is an even more unpredictable force. His deck contains an ungodly number of wild symbols, what giving is he sitting on a. You remember his uh, the giant robot-looking machine that he I called know, down yeah. in like the first door okay. with like the beam eyes. That's what he said. Okay. On. Uh, so his deck contains an ungodly number of wild symbols, giving him amazing flexibility and using his smarts he may gain even more wilds when he's outclassed. He may not be a powerful fighter, but his sorcery gives him re resilience and insight into the enemy's plans. A master of deception, even at his young age, he can talk thugs into becoming civilians and even eliminate villains' crisis tokens. That's funny. That's kind of funny. I'm surprised he's not an anti-hero. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. But... Um, there is his model, um, right there, which is a cool looking model. He's yeah. got like a creepy little smile. Yeah, like uh, a smirk. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, this is update number 51, a problem child looking at Kid Loki. Okay, guys, taking a look at update number 52, choose your side in the Civil War. So we have a new, uh, expansion, Marvel United expansion called the Civil War, which is very exciting. Um, so right here, let's take a look at this. So, uh, Civil War, for an optional buy of $40, you will get, uh, Wonder Man, Spectrum, Captain America, Iron Man, uh, Tigra, Yellow Jacket, Kate Bishop, and Goliath. Ooh. Along with all of these other pieces. And then, Kickstarter exclusive Hulkling and the Iron Spider. So let's take a look at this. So for $40, this optional buy brings an entirely new way of playing Marvel United. The Civil War play modes make it a true player versus player game in which two teams of heroes class against each other with no villain in sight. Featuring a roster of heroes from both sides of the registration conflict, this expansion brings two ways for players to fight each other, either the more casual clash of heroes or the more competitive. A symmetrical and thematic registration clash, which team will you choose? Hmm. So you could do 1v1, but I wonder if you could do, like, multiple people against multiple people. I think so. Like yeah, because that's like, two teams. So yeah, two so. teams. 2v2 or maybe yeah. even 3v3. Yeah, so these are all the pieces and content that you would get in here. Uh, and, if, if, and if you acquire this optional buy in this game, you will also get two extra Kickstarter exclusive bonus heroes. One for each team, the Iron Spider and Hulkling, along with their equipment cards. Uh, so let's explore and let's dive in. So let's dive in and see what this mode is all about, guys. So Registration Clash is a PvP mode that closely recreates the dynamics and events surrounding the Civil War over the Superhuman Registration Act. No villain is used in this mode, with the players dividing themselves into two teams, either 2v2 or 3v3. Okay, so okay. we go up to six. This is an asymmetrical class in which each team faces different challenges and seeks to fulfill their own objectives. Some general player versus player rules. Uh, teams will alternate turns, each playing their hero card on a separate storyline. Heroes can attack each other, forcing the opposing team hero to discard one card. All heroes have shield tokens, which they use to defend from one attack, and which is refreshed after they are KO'd. Uh, no threats are used, but a hero can only use a location's end of turn effect if their team controls that location. 
as indicated by the color of control tokens on that location. Okay, so kind of like a uh, like uh, domination type or like mm -hmm. capture the flag, king of the yeah. hill. Uh, overflow damages a hero from the team that controls that location. Interesting. So that's kind of how the setup will work there, right? You have one team with their cards on the storyline, the other team with their cards. There's the location and there's the board in the middle. Okay, that looks really cool. Uh, so one, on one side is Captain America's anti-registration team blue, the Secret Avengers. They have their own deck of missions that they need to accomplish one by one in order to win the game. Weaving the Civil War narrative, these missions place danger tokens in various ways on civilians, thugs, or locations, which the Team Blue heroes must deal with in order to complete the mission and move to the next one. Each time a hero, each time a mission is completed, a population card is drawn, adding more thugs and civilians around the play area. Whenever Team Blue manages to KO a Team Red hero, they gain two action tokens. On the other side is Iron Man's Pro Registration Team Red. They set out to apprehend the outlaw secret Avengers. On the central dashboard, they have their vault, to which they can add cell cards by spending heroic actions. They can also chase down Team Blue heroes and tag them by spending a heroic action to give them a crisis token. If that hero is then KO'd, they are placed on a cell, triggering the trap effect of the cell card chosen. These traps may allow Team Red to shut down the enemy's equipment, discard their action tokens, stun them, etc. A hero trapped in a cell cannot move by any means and loses all of their special effects. Or you get put in prison. Yeah. You get trapped. Uh, in order to escape, either them or one of your teammates must spend two actions of the same type on their turn. Uh, players can play a single game with Team Blue winning if they complete all of their missions within a specific number of turns. Or Team Red winning if they can keep Team Blue from doing so. Or players can play two back-to-back -back games swapping roles to see who can complete the mission in the lowest number of turns. Okay, so let's look at Clash of Heroes. This, I'm assuming this is another mode here. So sometimes heroes just want to punch each other in their perfect teeth. The Clash of Heroes mode allows players to engage in a more casual PvP conflict with more straightforward symmetrical rules. Clash of Heroes follows the same general PvP rules stated above, but the teams are competing for points. Teams earn points by rescuing civilians, defeating thugs, controlling locations, and of course, KOing their opponents. That's funny. That's funny, yeah. yeah. I'll, I think I would prefer this one a little bit. I the other one sounds interesting, but yeah, it, I think this one's a little more even. You're just going straight forward. Correct, to each other. correct. Um, okay, so as the scores advance, population cards are drawn to add thugs and civilians to the locations. Heroes can spend heroic actions in a location to gain its public endorsement and switch control of it to their team. After every four hero turns, an event card is drawn and resolved. These events have a variety of effects, including instantaneous ones that reward the team controlling the most locations or help the team that is behind, or effects that last until the next event. Protecting heroes in their controlled locations or nullifying special effects. Once the event deck runs out, the game is over and the team with the most points wins, unless a team manages to reach 40 points before that. Okay. Uh... The good folks at Quackalope, yeah, so I saw this, I haven't watched this video, but I saw it pop up. Uh, Quackalope made a update talking about this game, or talking about this mode and this update in general. So if you guys uh, are interested in that, you can uh, visit Quackalope's uh, channel and take a look at that. So let's look at some of the heroes. And so we got the pro registration, uh, Iron Man, is aka Tony Stark, who is the leader. So during Civil War, Iron Man leads the pro registration team with an iron fist. As team leader, he can easily mobilize his teammates out of turn so they can be best positioned when their turn comes. His vast resources also give him heroic, has given team heroic and fight tokens to perform the tasks required of them. Iron Man's latest armor not only allows him to attack both adjacent locations, but can also regenerate to refill his hand. Hmm. Interesting. Um, here's some of his cards available right here. Uh, then also, with the new equipment cards, Iron Man's arsenal is at peak efficiency. His deflector shields make him temporarily invulnerable. His stealth field generator allows him to sneak around unseen. And his Omni Beam fires a single truly devastating blast, though the power overload KOs Iron Man afterwards. Oh no. See what that says? So use on your turn. If you didn't punch this turn, deal unpreventable triple damage against a villain or henchman in you or adjacent location. In your then or you, in your or adjacent location. Then you are KO'd. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're KO'd. Interesting. Uh, okay, there's his other equipment cards right there. Uh, that's his new model for Civil War, which is kind of cool, shooting like a repulsor blast. 
Ow. Okay, next up we have a uh, Tigra. Okay, so Tigra's animalistic nature gives her tracking ability. She can use to find any henchmen and attack them. Her sharp claws and fangs can also deal a surprising amount of damage her enemies simply can't avoid. Her cat-like reflexes allow her to avoid damage and her strong will ensures she's not forced to play cards randomly or face down. Uh, so there's some of her cards that she has available to her. So tracking, move to any location with the henchman and then punch there. That's actually pretty good. Like you get to choose where you want to go. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if there's a thug there, but like yeah. it allows you to set up your team. There's her piece right there. That's cool. Like I love some of the details they add on these models. Mm -hmm. um, all right, next up is Wonder Man. Um, I've heard of Wonder Man before, but is a chemical and ionic radiation induced human mutate. That looks like Superman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, like Superboy. Uh, Wonder Man is an incredibly resilient hero bursting with energy. He is nearly immortal since he can draw an extra card whenever he starts his turn with only one card in hand. Even getting to the point is unlikely for him, even getting to that point is unlikely for him as a couple of his cards keep him from taking any damage at all. Meanwhile, he uses his energy to quickly fly around, doing what must be done with extra move and wild actions. Definitely seems like a Superman esque. Yeah. Uh, yeah, hero. There's his model right there. That looks cool. I yeah. like the the purple. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, moving on to Yellow Jacket. You know who Yellow Jacket is? Hank Pym. You know who that is? His brother or uncle or something. No, nah, that's the uh, Friend, that's the son. girl's the girl's father. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Wait, what? Which girl? Remember the girl that Scott Ant Man, his Ant Man and the girl, the Wasp. Yeah, I thought. So it was that is her father. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I knew that because I knew the the last name Pim. Pim yeah. That's why uh, I said uncle. I thought he was yeah. her uncle. So Hank Pym or Yellow Jacket is the inventor of the Pym particles, which allows altering the size of things in dramatic fashion wearing his yellow jacket suit. He has two starting hand cards he can utilize throughout the game, shrink and grow. His Pym particle cards allow him to add tokens to either of these cards, changing charging them. Then he can either shrink to micro microscopical. There we go. That's what I would say. Shrink to microscopical sizes, spending the tokens on his shrink card to evade damage, or grow to colossal sizes, spending tokens on his grow card to increase his attacks. Um, there's his cards there available. So Yellow Jacket suit is equipped with disruptor stings that allow range attacks across multiple uh, locations. So use on your turn, double punch, split as you like in your and adjacent locations, then turn this card face down. And there is his model right there, standing on a bottle cap. <laughs> he shrunk to the size of a bottle yep. cap. All right, taking a look at the Secret Avengers, good old Cap. Uh, Captain America, Steve Rogers. Uh, so during Civil War, Captain America finds himself leading the outlaw Secret Avengers team. Wearing his classic suit, he remains a hero to the people, gaining heroic actions to rescue civilians. As a master strategist, he can have all of the heroes in his team perform an out-of-turn action of their choice, surprising their opponents. While his shield protects him, even if Cap is brought down, he just gets up and again, up again and is ready for another round with extra heroic or attack tokens. His shield is certainly not just for defense, it also allows him to attack and even ricochet it around. If it defeats a thug, it bounces to attacks in adjacent location. If it defeats a thug there, it bounces back to attack in another adjacent location. That's pretty cool. That is like, pretty can, like, cool, skip yeah. it around. Uh, there's some of his cards right there. Uh, so it says, when Captain America throws his mighty shield, he can attack an adjacent location, or he can use it to protect any hero in his location. Later, he can discard an action token to retrieve his shield to use it again. So, cap shield, use on your turn, punch in any adjacent location, or use on a villain turn to ignore one damage dealt to any hero in your location. Then turn this card face down. So there is Captain America's model with the nice American flag. Okay, up next, we got Kate Bishop. You know Kate Bishop, right? Yep. All right. We watched, uh, did she, what was the Green name? Arrow? No, uh, what was the name of her show? Hawkeye. Hawkeye, that was the name Hawkeye. of her show. She was in there, yeah. yeah. Uh, Kate Bishop. <laughs> I called him the Green Arrow yeah, again. I know, I know. I'm terrible about that. Uh, she mixes Hawkeye and Green Arrow all the time. <laughs> all the time. Uh, Kate Bishop is unparalleled with a bow and arrow, being able to split her shots across various locations, clever in gaining the support of the people. She also she has her extra heroic actions, gaining further heroic tokens if she uses them to rescue civilians. She may also get another hero to drive her around while she shoots. <laughs> 
That's pretty funny. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Moving that hero with her and performing free actions in each location they enter. Resourceful, she may gain wild tokens or recharge for free. One of the trick arrows that she always carries around. <laughs> So you drive, you I drive. Should. <laughs> I should. This turn when moving, you may bring another hero in your location with you. You may punch in each location you enter accompanied by a hero. Uh, so uh, I'll leave that up if you guys want to see. So Kate's quiver is full of trick arrows. In fact, she must choose only three of the four equipment cards available to her to use in any game. Explosive arrows damage multiple targets in adjacent location. While wire arrows allow her to move and perform a heroic action. Pin particle arrows keep a henchman from using their BAM, and smoke bomb arrows protect all heroes in an adjacent location. So those are all four of her arrows right there. Pretty good. I, I like I like the variety that you yeah, have. Yeah, like, me too. You get to pick. Um, so there is her uh, model there with a nice little archery board in the back, and she got the shades on. Cool yeah. as forever. Okay. Up next is a Spectrum. Do you know who that is? Oh, Rambo. Yeah, yeah. she's from um, Miss Marvel, her friend. Yep, the and then she's though, also in right? the TV show. She's the younger one. Yes, yeah. correct. And then she's also in yeah. the Scarlet Witch. Yeah. Um, yeah. I forgot what that was called. Um, WandaVision. WandaVision. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so Spectrum's ability to manipulate energy can make her intangible, making it impossible for enemies to harm her. She can also concentrate her energy into potent energy blasts that can target adjacent locations. Her starting hand card can have Spectrum acting as an energy source for all of the heroes, so that whenever they damage an enemy, they deal additional damage if she is nearby. Uh, so there's her cards right there. Um, let's just read energy source. As long as this card is face up in the storyline, once per turn, when another hero deals damage to an enemy in your location, they may perform one free punch there. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there is her model um, right there. Okay, up next we have Goliath. Um, I am not too familiar with Goliath, but I basically know he's kind of the guy that starts the Civil War, or like the Civil War started around him. Um, he worked for a lab assistant of Dr. Hank Pym and then took over the research and developmental section of Stark. Having memorized the formula to Pym particles, he experimented with trying to eliminate the formula's harmful side effects. When tested on himself, he was able to grow large, grow large like Pym and successfully duplicate Pym's powers. With Pym's encouragement, Foster became crime fighter Goliath. During the superhuman civil war, Goliath was a member of Captain America's Secret Avengers. Interesting. Okay. Goliath can grow to colossal sizes thanks to his exposure to pin particles. Such a big guy starts the game with a big hand, meaning his starting hand card is free, not counting as one of the three cards in his starting hand. His big fist can be used to deal huge amounts of damage to a single target, though that costs Goliath one of his cards. However, the bigger they are, the harder they fall, and if Goliath is KO'd, he can stun a villain or henchman, canceling their BAM effect. Uh, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you know, they have to continue to provide us with awesome content, so that is his model. And it's, it's a big huge. model. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's yeah, probably, so it's big. I would imagine, I wonder if it's going to be the same size as the Gal uh, Galactus model. Because that was nine, nine inches. inches. So I, I bet you this is probably going to be six to nine inches, somewhere in there. Wow. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there he is. So there's your standard. That's how big he is. Um, okay, locations. Let's take a look at some of these locations they got. This location, the location in this set brings some key settings of the Civil War to the game. Washington, D.C. cycles heroes cards. Garrett Castle, uh, Garrett's Castle helps wounded heroes gain cards or attack act tokens. Bar with no name can draw in thugs from other locations to be defeated there. Sokovia allows sacrifices to rescue civilians or defeat thugs around it. The Raft allows heroes to pursue the damaged henchmen. The Avengers Mountain provides mobility or protection. So we got Washington, D.C., Garrett Castle, Bar with no name, Sokovia, the, the Raft, and Avengers Mountain. All right. Exclusive bonuses. So as a part of backing this, you'll get... Two extra heroes. Pro registration, you have the Iron Spider, which is uh, basically Peter Parker. That is um, a suit that he got from Iron Man. Mm -hmm. um, so even as Iron Spider, Peter Parker is still burdened by great power, extra attacks that give him heroic tokens for thugs defeated, and great responsibility, extra heroic actions that give him action tokens for civilians rescued. 
That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. uh, his starting hand, Spider Sense, enables him to swing away whenever a villain reaches his location. As the weight of the Civil War increases, he may, he may even announce to the world, my name is Peter Parker, and I've been Spider-Man since I was 15 years old, gaining a wild token and getting rid of any crisis or exposed token. If playing with the Secret Identity Challenge from Enter the Spider-Verse expansion. Cool. Uh, so there is some of his cards right there. The Iron Spider suit gives Peter valuable equipment besides the usual web shooters, which allows him to move or pull thugs or civilians. His mechanical spider arms, also called Waldos, uh, give him additional attack and or heroic actions. So there's his Waldos right there, web shooters. Uh, Why are they called Waldos? I don't know. <laughs> Interesting name. Uh, use on your turn, heroic or punch, and turn his card face down. There's his model right there, very cool. Um, and then we have the Secret Avenger Hulkling. Um, so, I know he's a part of the Young Avengers. The uh, child of Captain Marvel, Marvel and the Scroll Emperor's daughter. Interesting. He was sent to Earth for his own safety to live with his mother's servant as Theodore. Altman was able to shapeshift from a young age and he also possessed super strength. He joined the Young Avengers and adopted the superhero identity of the Hulkling. Uh, during the Civil War, S.H.I.E.L.D. arrested the Young Avengers, but Falcon and Captain America intercepted the S.H.I.E.L.D. bus transporting them. Uh, Teddy worked alongside Captain America in his plan for a final confrontation with Iron Man and his team impersonating Yellow Jacket to free the heroes held in Prison 42. Interesting. Uh, Hulk, Hulkling's Kree physiology gives him a healing factor starting hand card that allows him to draw a card every villain turn if he's wounded. Most, notably, most notable, however, is his ability to mimic other heroes. Taking the starting hand card from a hero not being used and placing it next to his impersonating card, it functions as if it were his own card played on the storyline, giving Hulkling that special effect. Yeah. If he is KO'd, he must discard that card and choose a new one next turn. Also, when he plays a metamorphic adaption card, he's even able to use the action symbols at the bottom of the card being impersonated. So that is him right there. That's pretty cool. Uh, so that's him that you basically take... He wants to impersonate Spider-Man 2099, so you would take that card. That is kind of cool. Uh, Hulkling wields his power Excelsior Sword, uh, making all attacks he makes against henchmen unpreventable. He may even give Excelsior to another hero by spending two action tokens. Forged from a Kree Negaband, uh, the wedding rings worn by Hulkling and his husband Wiccan form a powerful bond between them. They can be used to allow the wearer to draw an extra card in their time of need. You know who Wiccan is? The, yes, I recognize the name. He's, That's Speed's brother. Yeah, yeah. Speed's brother, yeah. I was going to say. I've okay. So many names. I've I know. Heard. Excelsior, permanent. When you attack henchmen during your action phase, your damage is unpreventable. At the end of the turn, you can discard it for two actions. Okay, there is his model right there. That's a nice little sword. Cool little sword update. All right, team update. Uh, with the introduction of the Civil War expansion, we can now reveal the two teams included in the team decks. Ah, oh, those are the other two teams that were secret from 36. So you have the Pro Registration Team Deck, um, has heroes enforcing the law, granting extra attacks if they defeat thugs, supplying additional attack power to focus on a single enemy, or aggressively interrogating the villain or a henchman to reveal the next master plan card. However, being on this team makes the heroes public figures, which limits their attacks in locations with civilians. This deck is going to have Black Widow, Wasp, Bishop, Deadpool, Iron Man, Tigra, uh, Wonder Man, Yellow Jacket, Iron Spider, Blade, She-Hulk, Mr. Fantastic, and Songbird. And then we have the Team Captain America Secret Avengers deck. The Secret Avengers team know what they fight for, gaining heroic actions for rescuing civilians, performing extra attacks when there are no civilians in the vicinity, and making them outlaws, evading the villain until they go on the offensive. However, being anti-registration makes them hunted by the authorities, preventing them from rescuing civilians if there are thugs around. Uh, so then that one is Black Panther, Storm, Captain America, Goliath, Kate Bishop, Spectrum, Hulkling, Daredevil, Falcon, Luke Cage, Punisher, Spider-Woman, Vision, Human Torch, Invisible Woman, Cloak, and Dagger. Yes. I want to point out, interesting enough, you've got Invisible Woman and Human Torch on this team, and then you've got Mr. Fantastic on this one. Yeah. Mm. They do split up. I wonder where the thing's at. <laughs> He's dead. No. Uh, the oh, he does die, doesn't he? I think he does, yeah. Oh, no. The A-Force team also gets a couple of reinforcements that were previously secret, so we're adding Spectrum and Kate Bishop to the A-Force. Uh, Tigra and Wonder Man to the West Coast Avengers. 
Wonder Man to the Force Works team. Okay, so this is the uh, Kickstarter exclusive uh, Civil War expansion. As always, you can choose it as an optional buy. Uh, so this will be a optional buy for, was it 40 I think? $40. $40. Um, I think this is a must back. I think I'm definitely backing it. Yeah. Um, for 40 bucks, everything that you're getting this in here. This almost makes it a whole different yeah, game. Yeah, it makes it a whole game. I think this is going to make the game more funner. I think this might draw more, more people. Fun. More fun, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think this might draw a lot more people to the game rather than it just being a PvE game. It's now PvP. Yeah. And so, it, 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 but it's a different PvP than villain mode. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, guys, looking at update 53, Magic Hour. So the community has been successful in hitting the 1,700K mark, getting Kid Loki. <laughs> uh, we just talked about the Civil War expansion for $40, which everybody should be backing. Um, and up next, look at that. Wiccan. Uh, for 1,780K, we will unlock Wiccan. So Wiccan is the other child of uh, Scarlet Witch Scarlet and Vision. Witch and Vision. And so he inher inherited her uh, magical powers. So one of Scar the Scarlet Witch's magical children, Wiccan, is a powerful warlock in his own right. The young Avenger can fire force, fire force blasts at adjacent locations or warp reality to allow another hero to swap cards with the storyline. His wild magic can generate several different effects from moving to any location, allowing others to draw cards to, uh, to revealing the villain's next master plan. Uh, there is his model right there. That's a pretty cool looking model. Yeah. With a lot of details on it. Yeah. Uh, forged from a Kree Negaband, the wedding rings worn by Wiccan and his husband, the Hulkling, form a powerful bond between them. They can use, be used to allow the wearer to draw an extra card in their time of need. That's kind of cute. Yeah. And very inclusive. Yep. Yeah. Um, so it'll work with the Hulkling, with his other band. All right. But you can use it on your own as well. Uh, so, teams update. Uh, let's take a note that Wiccan is now part of the Secret Avengers. Learned from the previously team decks and optional buy. All right, guys, taking a look at update number 54, Seeing Red. So, uh, as always, we have been successful in hitting the 1,780k <laughs> mark, unlocking uh, Wiccan. Uh, there is the Civil War uh, additional buy for $40. And up next at 1,850k, the Mustache of Justice. The Mustache <laughs> of Justice. Uh, we have the anti-hero Red Hulk. Uh, Daddy is I just see you have a... <laughs> Look at that mustache. That's, He's a general. That okay, is a, all generals have to have that mustache. That is a gorgeous caterpillar mustache. Oh my god! Right gosh. there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grow a caterpillar mustache. No, you're not. Um, okay. <laughs> we have the awesome Red Hulk. So as a hero, Red Hulk has some similarities to your regular garden variety Green Hulk. His rage can deal two damage to everything in a location, also causing civilians to flee. He is also able to absorb energy from other heroes, forcing anybody in locations around him to discard cards with special effects, so he gains wild tokens. Not the nicest of moves, but can definitely be effective. Oh, he's an anti-hero. He is. I didn't realize there that. There is his. Because I think when he first becomes like the Red Hulk, he has trouble like controlling it. Yeah, like, controlling it his makes anger. sense, yeah. but... Okay, here's his model right here, guys. And then it says, As a villain, Red Hulk is seeking revenge on the heroes, uh, chasing them relentlessly and causing trouble in order to increase his revenge track. His threats help him look for trouble, ensuring he always moves to a location occupied by heroes. Expectedly, he's a tough foe who hit hard and often. He's a tough foe who hits hard and often. Uh, the heroes have a secret weapon, though, Betty Ross. The Red Hulk's daughter is around, and her present neutralizes Red Hulk's BAM. If her token is in his location, the heroes can control her movement according to the moves on the latest cards they play. So if they play her cards right, she can stand a chance at bringing the big guy down. Ah, oh, that's cute. So that's cute, yeah. Okay, so that is the Betty Ross token that you will get. Um, Alright guys, taking a look at number update 55. Just a real quick looking at some more painted marvels. Uh, that we have here looking at the Civil War and some of these stretch goals. Uh, so there is the Iron Man uh, painting right there. Man, that looks so good. Yeah. Uh, the Tigra. She looks awesome. She does. I want to try her. Wonder Man. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Yellow Jacket. <laughs> nice Hank Pym. Uh, Captain America. Kate Bishop. Mm -hmm. uh, Spectrum. AKA Monica Rambo, Goliath. Man, that's pretty cool. That is. 
Uh, and then we have the Iron Spider. Oh, I just noticed that's Cap Shield. He's oh, standing over yeah. it. yeah. And then the Hulkling. Right there. And then some stretch goals. Yeah, she definitely looks like... That's Lalandra. She definitely looks like she belongs to Star Wars. Yeah. Um, and then Havoc. Uh, Dark Star. Elsa Bloodstone. She is on a dragon. That's yeah. definitely a dragon. And then Kid Loki. <laughs> that one's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. Ugh. And then last one is Wiccan. That's pretty cool too. Mm -hmm. Alrighty guys. So that was update number 55. Looking at the painted marbles. So that was update uh, 51 through 55 guys. We are making our way chugging along. <laughs> um... The community keeps on funding this game, so they keep coming out with updates. I think they're at uh, update 68 now. We almost wow. at 70. We gotta catch up. Uh, so <laughs> we're just continuing to work on catching up. But as always, guys, I hope you are enjoying this content. Um, and let's go ahead and leave a comment in the box. Are you backing the Civil War or are you excited uh, for the Civil War adding a more uh, PvP variant to the game? On top of that, go ahead and us, give us a like. Go ahead and hit that nice notification bell so when we drop content, you guys are aware. And if you have not already, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel, guys, so we can keep providing you with more awesome content. Um, as always, y'all have a great one. Bye. Bye.